In this video, I'd like to do a fairly simple problem of Newton's second law. I have a hanging mass here with this system of cables. However, it has a bit of a subtlety which uh, books and I will say physics professors usually uh, don't talk about when, and this problem just sort of shows up in as an assignment or a, a test question. And so I want to do it to highlight that subtlety. So I, I have this mass and I know that uh, I'm given that it has a mass of four kilograms, and the horizontal rope here in this picture has a tension in it of 12 newtons. And my question I'm asked is, what is the angle theta of between this rope and the ceiling? Now, I'm not quite sure uh, to start with what I'm supposed to do with that. Uh, I have this tension in one rope. Um, I don't know what else how I'm supposed to get theta out of that. And so I, I sort of have a good picture here. I'm going to start brainstorming a little bit. I think, of course, Newton's laws should apply to this problem. And I think I probably want to uh, apply forces. So taking my general approach to looking at forces, the first thing, if I'm going to use Newton's second law, uh, the first thing I need to do is choose an object. Well, I have an object here. This is the mass. And so why don't I apply uh, Newton's second law on this mass? So I've chosen an object. The next thing I need to do is uh, find the forces on this object. So there's uh, the gravity. I'll identify that with F sub G. It's also in contact with this rope right here. And so in that rope, it has a, a tension. And I'll call this, uh, I'll call this T1. And so there's a tension, which I'll call T1. And um, that's the only that's the only uh, uh, force in contact with the mass, so that's it. So I can go to my free body diagram, and I have tension one that's up. I have the force due to gravity that's down. I think I'm I'm beginning to see right away where this is going. If I call this up, the positive x-axis, then uh, everything's just along the x. My t one is equal to the magnitude of T1 i hat. My force due to gravity has a magnitude of uh, mg. It's in the negative direction i hat. I like to get my magnitudes out there, assign my signs given my coordinate system. The sums of these forces must equal to m and a. If everything's at rest, that's zero. And I get that uh, the tension in one, the rope that's attached to the mass, is equal to uh, the mass times gravity. And, and I think, you know, I, I went through a lot of steps here. If I've done a bunch of these, I might have even seen that right away. But there's no use uh, going th through the steps to make sure you have the right answer. But that doesn't really get me anywhere, does it? Well, it, maybe it does. I, I know where this is. But, but what exactly does that tell me? Is this tension the same as, uh, let's see, is it the same as this tension? Um, because in the string model, I said that the tension throughout the rope is equal everywhere. But that's just not true. If that were true, I could have had that tension was equal to uh, this tension in this rope. But also the string model had a string only connecting two objects. And I've got strings that are connected that are connected to three different objects, the mass, the, uh, the wall, and the ceiling. So yeah, this tension here, this T1, isn't really the same as T. So what are we supposed, to, how are we supposed to deal with that? And this is where we get into uh, a little bit of the subtlety. The, the place to look at, the next time place I want to look at Newton's laws, is right at this vertex. The problem is, that's not really an object as we've defined it so far. I mean, if I've, I've had, I've always assumed my strings are massless, and so there isn't an object here with, with any mass that I've been told about anyway. And so we have to really start of, we have to apply, so I call it a little bit of subtle, we have to imply from the problem that there exists uh, some object here, we'll, we'll call it the sort of the knot where these three uh, strings or ropes are connected. And so I'm going to look at this, this knot right here where the uh, um, 
where these three strings are connected. Now, I don't know what the mass is of this knot, but I also know that since it's static, uh, the mass isn't probably not going to play a significant role. So, so let's look at apply f equals ma at that at that point. So what are so look at this this knot or the vertex. So I have to choose an object. I'm choosing that object. What are my my forces? My forces are the the tension uh, in the horizontal, which I called just t, which I called just t, t1 and t2. So let's do a uh, free body diagram for this. And so I have T1. Remember, our string model always has the uh, force um, in the direction of the string leading away from our object, which is in this case the knot. And then we have T coming off in this direction. And then we have T2 which leads away from the object, which is our knot, in, in this direction. And so, so where, is, where is that? Where, where is the angle related to this? We know that this is theta here. And so if I draw a coordinate system on my free body diagram, that means this angle is theta. Uh, I'm going to call this my positive x up my positive y, and now I can um, uh, apply the the components and and sum do the vector sum of the forces. So if I do the vector sum of the forces, I'll I can do this down here. I have uh, t, my first uh, my first force here. It has some magnitude t in the uh, x direction. It's at magnitude t, and it's in the negative x direction given my coordinate system, and it has nothing in the y. If I look at t1, that's equal to uh, nothing in the x. It has a magnitude t1. It's in the negative y direction. And then t2, so it's going to have components along both directions. So now I need to uh, find the components. So my first component, I'm going to find the length of this side of the triangle, and that's the magnitude t2 cos theta. That's just the length of that triangle. It's in the i hat and it's positive. Okay, that's fine. And then now I want the, the length of this side of the, of the triangle and that's going to be uh, t2 sine theta j hat. And it's also uh, positive. It's in the positive y direction. Okay, so, not sure why I had to switch colors, but uh, I have the vector sum of these then is equal to the mass of whatever object this is. See, sort of this mass of the knot times the acceleration of the knot. And this becomes a construct. It's not moving, so all of this is zero. And so I could have just sort of brushed over the fact that there is an object there. And that's what just a lot of, of books do. So you have to be really careful if you're going to apply Newton's laws rigorously what exactly you're doing. And so I, I sort of said, okay, there is going to be some object there, this knot, and I can sum the forces on it equal to the mass of that object times the acceleration of that object. And this now gives me relationships between uh, my, my parameters. And so in the... Uh, the first expression, do the y-axis first. Let's see, where are my two relationships here? Right. I sum my, my x components and then sum my y components. And so uh, my y component gives me, I'll do x component, fine. Gives me uh, minus t plus t2 cos theta is equal to zero. And then I have uh, minus t1 plus t2 sine theta equal to zero. And now I don't know, I know t and I know t1, right? I, I found t1 here. I was given t here. I know the mass 
uh, I know mass and mass g. So what I don't know is t2 and I don't know theta. And so I can use these equations, two equations, two unknowns. I'm now moving to the solving stage. I can solve them directly. So what would be the best way to solve these? If I want to get rid of t2 and solve for theta, do you know how I would do this? I would, I would get this equation first, look at t2 sine theta is equal to t1, and then this one, t2 cos theta, this is a handy trick to remember, which is equal to t. And now I'm just simply going to divide these equations, divide them. So on the left hand side, the t2's cancel, sine theta cosine theta give me tangent theta. And then on the right hand side, I have the magnitude of t1 over t. At t1, I found from before, which is mg, and then uh, t, and t is equal to, to 12, mass is equal to 4, so this is equal to g over 3. Tangent theta is equal to g over 3, and if I plug in g, so I'll put this in the calculator, I get an angle of 73 degrees. All right, so this was a, a relatively simple uh, the problem, not too much going on here. The the thing to realize was to how to solve for the tension in this, is know that the tension in the strings are not the same because not a simple string connecting two objects like in our typical string model. Each of these strings had a different tension in them. This is essentially three separate strings all connected by uh, an object in the center here, this sort of knot, which otherwise wasn't even described in the problem. It's something we had, it's, it was implied, and we had to be able to extract it from the problem to apply Newton's laws to it. And then also sort of a uh, handy uh, way to divide equations when you had, uh, when you had them in this form.